Mm. Toyota's Mirai is its first hydrogen powered fuel cell car and inside it looks pretty normal. Um, it's quite a luxurious car, very pleasant to drive, uh, looks a lot like the Prius in terms of how it's laid out, you know, much of the features of a same. And indeed there are a lot of similarities between this car and Toyota's hybrid. Uh, as you can see there's big navigation screen um, and the car looks and feels really nice on the road. It isn't the most powerful, uh, although it's electrically driven, it doesn't have any of that Tesla speed really. Um, it's rapid enough though and uh, certainly would beat a lower end petrol car. Um, but crucially it's more about the fact this is an all round package, a, a luxury car inside, um, but one that obviously is designed to be incredibly sustainable. And particularly in the UK uh, and the US where fuel emissions are a huge deal, this is going to become more and more key. But don't forget, there are very few places to fill up a car with hydrogen at the moment. To find out more about the car, I spoke to Neil Spires, who's the product manager for Toyota UK. So in essence under here, this is the electric motor. So you've got the electric motor and what we call the power control unit. So that is the brains of the system. So this is literally what drives the car. You then have the fuel cell stack lives in the centre of the car. So the fuel cell stack lives beneath the uh, front seats. So that's where the chem chemical reaction is. So you have the air flowing in through the front of the car here and in here. And then you get the reaction from the hydrogen, from the tanks at the rear. So there's two tanks at the rear, one beneath the rear passenger bench, and then one slightly behind it. And then it comes together in the fuel cell. So you get the basic reaction of hydrogen being broken down, get the electron release producing the electricity, the hydrogen ion then joins up at the back end with oxygen and then you get the water coming out the tailpipe. So there you have it, once you've finished your drive you can optionally choose to uh, pump out the water. The car will do this automatically when the tank is full but there are some times when you might want to do it manually. If it's very very cold uh, you obviously the water can freeze in the tank and that would be bad uh, so if you think that's going to be a problem you can just dump it straight out at the end of a journey. So the output from this car is literally just clean water and to prove I'm not going to die, I'm going to drink it. Mm.